Welcome to Be Wise, information about cannabis for older adults. Brought to you by Active Aging Canada, a national charity that supports older adults living well and remaining active. Production for this podcast was made possible through a financial contribution from Health Canada's Substance Use and Addictions Program. Now, let's go to the Active Aging Canada studios and join National Executive Director Patty Clark and Ward Maxwell, Director of Marketing and Communications. In this episode, the therapeutic benefits of cannabis. So this week, we want to talk about the therapeutic benefits of cannabis. And it's important to understand how cannabis works on our systems. And I think when we go through this, it's a little, a little technical. Um, but I think as we go through it, you'll have a better understanding of how the THC and the CBD affects our systems and, and why it does that. So we're going to talk about cannabinoids. And they are similar to the naturally occurring compounds in the human body. And here's the big word, and they're known as the endocannabinoids. And they act on the endocannabinoid system. So the research on this endocannabinoid system is really still very limited. We're going to speak to what we know, and we're going to talk about where there's a lot of research and where there's a little research. And it's really important to understand that there is research in the area, but a lot of it is limited. So what we know right now is that this system runs throughout our entire nervous system, including the brain. And it has what we call receptors. The receptors are throughout our body. It is thought to impact the nervous system, our immune function, mood, appetite, and other body functions. So just as I'm explaining right now, you can see how the different chemicals, the THC and the CBD can affect different parts of our body. The two most well-known cannabinoid receptors are CB1 and CB2. So the CB1 receptors are responsible for the psychoactive effects of the THC. And they may, I will emphasize may, because as we said, the research is limited. They may play a role in memory, mood, sleep, appetite, and pain levels. And these CB1 receptors are also found in brain areas related to motor control and cognition. So the CB2 receptors are found mostly in the cells of the immune system and in our muscle and bone tissue. And they may, once again, they may play a role in reducing inflammation. So Ward, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the CB1 and the CB2 so we have a better understanding of how it works in our endocannabinoid system. All right. Well, the human endocannabinoid system is actually quite interesting. It runs throughout our body and it's divided into two different types of receptors, the CB1 receptors and the CB2 receptors. The CB1 receptors, as Patty mentioned, are the ones that THC activates. And they're found primarily in the brain and the central nervous system, but they're also present in nerves and in some organs, which we would kind of expect because THC is psychoactive. The CB2 receptors are mostly in the peripheral organs and especially cells associated with the immune system. And that's why scientists are particularly interested in the CB2 receptors, which pick up the CBD chemical in cannabis, because they believe that they may have many different medical therapeutic properties. Right, talking about the medical research, so there's a lot of research and testing being done on the potential of cannabinoids to reduce stress and to build appetite, to promote sleep, and to modulate pain and inflammation. And as we said, we're going to speak in our next few podcasts more about some of the therapeutic benefits of the potential therapeutic benefits of the uh, the cannabis uh, plant. So there may be a role for cannabis to play in various health issues and in healthy aging. In some cultures, it's interesting to note the cannabis is actually considered an ancient herbal medicine. But right now in Canada and the scientific literature around the world is still showing that the evidence is limited in many areas. And we'll talk about this in further podcasts. That's right, Patty. 
Interestingly, THC and CBD work somewhat like a lock and key. The CBD, the THC are the lock and they fit into keys that exist naturally in our body. Now, actually I have to change that statement because our research is always being brought up to date. It doesn't appear that CBD actually fits into the receptors in the endocannabinoid system. Instead, it affects them indirectly. And again, that is an effect that is still being studied and it's not fully understood yet. Finally, the endocannabinoid system also regulates temperature, memory, your cardiovascular system, energy and metabolism, and your digestion. That's it for our podcast today, and we'll come back to you next week with our first podcasts about actual medical conditions and cannabis. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Ward. Looking forward to talking to you next week. Well, that's all the time we have for today. For more information, go to activeagingcanada.ca where you can order a copy of our Be Wise booklet. It's available in 17 languages and is free. The views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Health Canada Substance Use and Addictions Program. Join us for our next podcast. And until then, remember to be active, be healthy, and be wise.